Jeffrey Epstein was a serial child sex offender. He died in August last year under suspicious circumstances. He committed his crimes out in the open. Many people knew of his illegal behaviour. So who were these enablers and will the women who were violated as children get justice? Just a reminder about this podcast, the content can be disturbing. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Prince and the Pervert podcast. I'm Lisa Tate. And I'm Jen Tarrant. Now we have an announcement, ladies and gentlemen. It's Prince Andrew's birthday today. He's 60 years old. I would like to say he's not looking good for his age. And I'd like to say maybe this is his last happy birthday that next year, hopefully, fingers crossed, not that it would ever happen, but one day he'll be in jail. Behind bars. Or at least telling the truth. So this is a bit of an Andrew-themed episode, isn't it? It's our birthday present to him. Yes. So I said I'd get the do 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 and I'll get the town crier to maybe read out a court summons. You are hereby ordered. Well, I want to send him a can of deodorant because, you know, he says he doesn't sweat, but enough decent people have come forward and said, oh, yes, he does. Actually, that's a great idea. I'm going to get him also a Pizza Express voucher. Oh, he'd love that, or the girls would. Yes, exactly, because he's a great dad, Jen. Don't you forget it. He's a great, great, great dad. Fantastic dad. So the news has been a lot about him this week. So we're going to talk about Andrew's island visit to a second tycoon facing child sex claims. What? There's another rich man out there who's been diddling kids? And they're friends with Andrew. Oh, who'd have thought? Hang on a minute. Has this guy got any links to Epstein? I think so. Oh. He's in the he's in the Caribbean. He has his I don't think he has an island, but I think he has a big place. So it's got a casino, a disco hut. You ready for this? It's a bit offensive. Um, cameras beneath the dance floor, reportedly to shoot images of revelers from below, upskirting. What an animal, allegedly. Um So the ceiling weighs 45 tonnes and this guy also has the world's largest sauna. But we'll get into that in a moment. Upskirting. Upskirting. Yep. Dirty old man. Oh. Now, Jen, what is your mission today? Well, I decided to go on YouTube and do a bit of searching for as many royals in one place at the same time making fools of themselves. So later on, I'm going to be talking about the 1987 It's a Knockout Royal Tournament. It was bad. Let's Spoiler alert, it was bad. It was classic, actually. Now, I'm also going to talk about Fergie. She's on my list, and you don't want to be on that list. I've done some research about her and I think she knows more about Epstein and this other pervert than she's letting on. So she's been seen with the other pervert? Yes, she stayed there. She brought her girls along to the pervert island. Now, I'm not a perfect mother in any way, shape or form, but I've never done that. And I've also never met Jeffrey Epstein on a tarmac with my daughters. If I had daughters, I've only got one, but yeah. Oh, that's... Boy. That's filthy, isn't it? And um, after that, we're going to talk about an application I've made for my cat to um, become a member at Andrew's favourite night spot, Tramp, because I have to do something because last week I applied to get a bank in the Virgin Islands, right? They haven't gotten back to me. Wow, really? So I'm moving on now. I'm going to move on to get my cat to be a member of this posh nightclub. But you offered them millions of dollars. Don't they believe us? I don't know what's going on there. I'm appalled. Oh, that government. Bad, bad, bad. So here we are. So we'll get into, unless you want to add anything. Um, Thank you all for listening, by the way. We're absolutely delighted. We are. And we've got some big plans coming up soon, so... Stay tuned. Now, 
Okay, so Andrew had an island visit in 2000. So this is what, right in the middle. This is why I think Epstein's connected. Oh. Because it was around the time he was spending a lot of time, sorry, with um, Jelaine. Ah, I do have a new thing for Jelaine, Ghislaine. I was calling her. <laughs> sorry, I'm on a mission now. <laughs> I was calling her Jizz Master Pervert. And a mate of mine, call out Fee from Cairns, went, every time I hear Lisa pronounce the name, all I hear is Jizz Stain. So that's it. I mean. We, we can't go past that. That is the perfect yeah. name for her. So, Ghislaine Maxwell, you're now known as Jizz, J-I-Z-Z, Stain. Yeah, that's good. I like it. I think I will stick with Ghislaine just because my brain. Your brain, but I need to go Jizz Stain. Yes. Because I'm the one with the, the bad mouth. No, not really. Oh, I'm a bit sweary. I'm from Lithgow. Yeah, true. Okay. So this tycoon, he actually owns a company, a fashion company. His name is Peter Nygaard. He's 78 and he took girls as young as 14. He told them he could make them into models and then put them on his island where he raped them and forced them into performing deviant acts. I'm not going to say what they are, but it got the Twitter sphere just totally grossed out. You can find out what it is if you need to. Um, okay, so Andrew, around that time, as I said, 2000s, around his 40th birthday, you've created a monster. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, this guy's a Canadian fashion designer. And he's already reached out of court settlements with three employees who accused him of sexual harassment. But where these guys are, that's just low level mm. filth. So he stayed on the island, Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, with their daughters. What have these girls been exposed to? What do they think is normal? Would this be their normal? I just wonder. I, it's the first thing I thought. You want to protect your children. And mm. yet she was. She would have known, you know, from Andrew's association with Epstein, she would have seen what goes on there, but she took her children there. Can I remind you, she also, Fergie, went to the New York house, met them on the tarmac, as I said before, and borrowed money from Epstein. Now, that money, it was only a small figure, like 15000 not sure if it was pounds or US dollars, but that small change, mm. you know, why was she after money and why such a small amount? Well, I read that it was for her assistant. Oh, she had to keep paying to keep the image that she was surrounded by assistants, therefore she was still important. Well, that's what I've heard. She's had financial troubles because she's paid so many people to be around her over the years. And she was hawking for diet loss companies and everything. Yeah, and Wedgwood China. Oh, I didn't know that one. She's also got a pilot's licence. And she wrote bad children's books. Who else has a pilot's licence? Oh. Both of them, helicopter licences. Really? Jelaine? Gistane. Gistane. Now, uh, I heard on Twitter um, from a really good source that Sarah introduced um, Epstein to Andrew via Jelaine. They're all inbred. Yes, so it's a small circle that they kind of live in. So my point is, okay, Sarah, I think the FBI needs to speak to you as well because I think you're around these people. I'm not saying that you're involved in the conspiracy or that you molested children, but I think you've been around them. You might be able to give them some helpful. You've got daughters. You would probably, like we would, do anything to protect our daughters, our sons. So you need to talk up. You need to speak. Mm. Well, maybe someone could dangle 50 bucks in front of her and she might go to the FBI. Yeah, 50 bucks, 20 bucks. I think she'd quite like living in witness protection because everything's paid for. But then, you know, you wouldn't be able to ride a motorised luggage through the China airport. If anyone gets a chance, just Google Sarah Ferguson Go to videos and YouTube has a picture of her on a motorised suitcase in China. Going through an airport. Classic stuff. 
Yeah, see, that's the thing. I think she's just really annoying and obnoxious. She's not classy? No. So this island, it had a casino, a disco hut, this glass ceiling weighing 45 tonnes and an A-frame lodge made from two fit, two foot thick Canadian pine logs. Now, I found all this in the Sun newspaper. Um, in the grounds, there was a helipad, fake vo- volcanoes that belch dry ice. What? Who needs that? A flock of peacocks. They're evil bastards. Peacocks are evil. Mm, I know. My friend, okay, there was a peacock that used to run around their neighbourhood and attack her chickens. Is this the Fern Bay one? Yes. Oh, it's everybody. It's famous around our place. It's It attacks people. It's like murderous. See, my great aunt lived in a gatehouse. And do you know what a gatehouse is? In a big estate, oh. the estates in England, she owned one part of the gatehouse. So they used to have these big brick structures where the gates opened and closed, but it'd be a house either side oh, of the, the gates. Okay. And she had, she lived there. She had peacocks and they were evil fuckers. They used to chase myself and my little brother around whenever we went to visit. Yeah, no, I've heard this um, peacock at Fern Bay is so bad, it's been involved in the murder of several of my friend's chickens. Oh, so it's wanted. <laughs> but you know what I think is hilarious? So he's so cool, runs around the neighbourhood with his feathers doing this and that, but he loses them all. So then he looks ridiculous in winter. No, in when would he lose his not feathers? <laughs> You're not David Attenborough. Nope. nope. <laughs> anyway, going back to it. But Epstein also had um, a flock of flamingos. Is that the right way to describe it? On his island as well. Um, but this guy had stone cobras, which hissed steam at sunset. Ugh. Um, 60-foot towers festooned with hundreds of flaming torches lit nightly by a staff. I quite like that. Mm, I'd have that. But does this sound familiar? Giant statues of nude women purportedly modelled on the owner's former girlfriends. Or would that, should that be former victims? Disgusting. Mm -hmm. So I just think that he's, um, the way he went about his conspiracy, his criminal conspiracy, and that's Peter Nygaard, he was very similar to Epstein. So I think they've chatted to each other. Well, they're in the loop because that weekend was when Fergie went on to the tarmac and her children met Epstein. Ugh. Of all the people in the world, went with Epstein. So during this period, it was Andrew had just become divorced in 96, 97. He turned 40, so he's having a midlife crisis. Incepts Jelaine and this Peter Nygaard. So, look, there's a photo, and I'll put this up on Instagram, of Fergie, two staff, her daughters, and um, the f- alleged pedophile. Ah, so that's the Canadian mm. fashion designer. Peter Nygaard. Ugh. And he's, oh, he's standing behind the girls. So he's had a lot of people on his island. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Uh, Lenny Kravitz. Robert De Niro. No, sorry. Sylvester Stallone. Jessica Alba. That's random. Yeah. Sean Connery. And also President George H.W. Bush. Ah. Mm. So um, the flight logs say that Princess Sarah Ferguson and kids were on the ground in the Bahamas and met Epstein's plane. So Sarah, when she took that money, it was £15,000 to help pay off her debts. Um, She took the money off Epstein 18 months after he got out of jail. Afterwards? Yep. Yep. So she later claimed her judgment had been clouded by her desperation to get out of her $5 million debt and vowed to repay the money. But the thing is, why only fifteen thousand pounds? If she was at five million in debt, he had five million floating around. Why didn't she hit him up for the full amount? Yeah. Oh, that's just weird. That, that was when he was in the navy. Oh no, he wasn't in the navy then. That's when he was doing. Oh, I can't say he was doing business, but he was doing diplomacy with a Khashoggi or two and some people, Middle East dictators' sons. He was friends with them. A Gaddafi. Ugh. Okay, so 
he has a lot of money, but I think it's stashed away. Mm. And for a while he had to live on his naval salary. And when she broke up with him, she didn't get a huge amount of money like Diana. And I think she only got 15000 a year for her upkeep. That's not much considering the lifestyle she really liked. That was obvious. Yeah. It was hard to give up. I imagine it would be. Mm. And that's why she ended up shrilling diet loss stuff and yeah. Wedgwood. Well, at the moment she's got another one of her books out and it's called Little Red. Because years ago I remember being sent promotional copies of her first child book or series, Budgie, a white rescue helicopter. And my eldest was only a little one at the time and was so into Thomas it wasn't funny, toot toot. And I brought that home and he just went, nah, no train. He didn't like it. Well, he's got discerning taste. And um, Sarah really had a hard time trying to create money and business opportunities for herself. She's lost a lot of money in lawyers as well. Oh, she would have. But now she's into the Middle East, as I said last week when she did her speech from Doha Mm. about kindness. So where's Andrew now in this whole shamozzle? Um, He stepped down, well, from his official duties, but he did meet the Chinese ambassador a couple of weeks ago. There are five Epstein accusers who want him to give evidence in US courts and asking him to talk to the FBI. And the FBI? have asked him to talk as well. I think they need to talk to Sarah as well. So I might tweet them and say no to you. Yeah. Contact Fergie. Yes. So the weird thing was after she got that money and she put, she's so over the top. The way she speaks and communicates is so over the top. This is what made Epstein want to sue her. I personally, on behalf of myself, deeply regret that Jeffrey Epstein became involved in my life in any way. This is 2011. I abhor pedophilia and any sexual abuse of children and know that this was a gigantic error of judgment on my behalf. I'm just so contrite. I cannot say. Whenever I can, I will repay the money and will have nothing ever to do with Free Epstein ever again. So that's basically only because he got busted or it re-emerged about his diddling children that she's come out and said this. Otherwise, she wouldn't have said a word. Well, he was going to go after her for defamation. I wonder if she did pay the money back. I think she just would have went, stuff you. That's what I would have done. Yeah, bugger it. In those circumstances. And was it Jeffrey who really was going after her or had Maxwell just ordered the defamation? I just don't understand it because he's trying to say he was defamed because he was accused of um, child sex and pedophilia in her comments here, right? But he was. But he was. But he would say, oh, I've only pled guilty to one count of um, procuring sex prostitution with a minor. That's what he'd say, that he's a pimp. So he got upset about that. It could have been good if it went to court. Imagine the documentation. Oh, of course it would be sealed. And we'd be yelling and screaming for even more documents to be unsealed. But I found something really good. I was looking at the NY Daily News and they referenced a joke Diane Sawyer joined Fergie with in 1996. Fergie said that the marriage floundered as she watched videos while Andrew had 27 concubines. What? Really? That, so mm, It's got a different spin in 2020, doesn't it? Oh, so it was like we back then when they divorced, we remained best friends and blah, blah, blah. Now it's like you had things on the side. I think he keeps her around because she knows something. Definitely. Why else? It's like They've got this weird codependent relationship. And she has been trotted out more and more in family events in the past year or two mm. as the palace knows that the heat's being turned on to Andrew. Yeah, well, she doesn't have any money. So um, there was a comment in that article that she got by on her title Blagging her way through life. Now, I looked up blagging. You knew what it meant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You pretend to be something you're not. Yeah. To get in doors you wouldn't normally get in. So she's had a home, but the rest she's had to find herself, like us. 
Yeah, like normal people. Um, Andrew will know that if he cuts her off now, which by rights he should do, she could annihilate him. Come on, Fergie, drop us a line. You can find us on Twitter, spill the beans, girl. Because you don't want to be associated with that. We know deep down you're actually, I reckon we'd have fun over a few champers together. So this friend said, does he want her inside the tent or outside? Obviously inside. It's an impossible call for him and for once he won't get any help from the Queen. He's got to work this one out for himself. Stand on his own two feet. Yes. Well, as I said, Fergie, this is disturbing. Really bad timing for her little red book. So she's hoping for mega bucks out of this, is she? Yep. Uh, no. Not again. So um, Virginia was a bit upset about it. That's Virginia uh, roberts Gufre. She was actually saying that it's just so so much poor timing and so offensive she just couldn't even start. Someone here said, um, you people are the scum of the earth, and Virginia retweeted him. Well, they are scum. Mm. Yep. They're trying to beha- um, pretend that they've done nothing wrong. And, yeah, sure, she may not have been involved in the alleged assault, but she would have seen these girls, these children. You've got to t- You've got to speak up. You need to. It's about time. And um, there's also references here to Andrew being pictured yachting with some of Epstein's sex slaves. Now, this was in France and near the island. I had only seen the Thailand photos before. So So this is Mediterranean? Um, yeah, a couple of locations. So... Um, I think he's in big trouble now with the second tycoon. I think the Queen will have to cut him loose, do you think? No fairy bread for your birthday party. Happy birthday to you. It's a low-key thing. And then people were like, oh, Harry and Meghan, they're not flying in. Well, of course. She'd be appalled, Meghan. And have you noticed over the past couple of days there's been a huge increase in um, Meg through, you know, cups of tea at people in Australia when she was touring that she's mean and nasty. There's been a huge, huge upswing bullshit Mm. about that couple. And, of course, hello, everybody. It's a smokescreen. Let's stop looking at Andrew and let's all point the finger at that divorcee half-black woman who stole away Harry. You know, can't you see it's happening again? Yes, and... Andrew today is having cake and dinner with the fam bam. Ugh. I would like to be a fly on the wall. I wonder how Charles views it all. He was friends with Jimmy Savile. Yeah, true. So Andrew is now linked to quite a lot of pedophiles. There was the guy in Canada who ran the boarding school that he went to. That's right. So he's linked with him. Epstein, Nyland... So, and Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile was always around. Mm. Jimmy Savile managed to go undetected for so many years. And if you're wondering who Jimmy Savile is, he's one of the UK's worst, most prolific child abusers. And he worked, I think, for the BBC. BBC. And everyone knew, just like Andrew, Everyone knew, just like with Epstein, everyone knew. He'd go into hospitals and go and visit sick children and it's come out that some of the alleged assaults Mm. happened while he was doing hospital tours. This is why, and I thank you all for listening to our podcast, and there are several others you can listen to, the Jeffrey Epstein Show and Rachel O'Brien, she is coming out soon with another Epstein episode. We have to talk about this, and that's why we can't let it go. We don't want to let it go. We can't let it go. It's for the the children who were abused and those that are coming forward. But we've seen now the Barclays CEO, he's been dragged into this as well. So many powerful one percenters are being fingered. Sorry about the use of that language, but... By the police and the FBI. So it's like drip, drip, drip. And we only know probably one-eighth of the story. And there's so many survivors who are yet to come forward. One thing I've noticed is with the whole political thing, 
they're mainly Democrats. So the American Twitterati are having a field day that, oh, well, you know, it's all these nasties on this side. And it's like, well, no, this isn't a political issue. This is a male issue. So I'm just waiting for the Republicans to start being named. And is this why the FBI have been dragging mm. the chain? Well, this is not about black or white, no. right? It is not about right versus left. No. Christian versus Muslim. No. There are shades of grey everywhere. It's a male issue. And, and as the women. Seen, and we've seen, just state, there's female co-conspirators and they need to be outed as well. So the trouble is when people are tweeting, oh, you know, Trump or, you know, they're listing all these people, they've never done anything. All you're doing is shaming survivors from coming forward because, oh, they all think these guys are innocent. They're never going to believe me. I'm going to be attacked. Don't link it to politics. Don't link it to race. Don't link it to religion because all you're doing is keeping those survivors quiet. Keep it classy. This is coming from the woman who swears on her own podcast, but I just think we need to. We're members of the same planet. It's humanity. So keep politics out, keep religion out, keep class, keep race out, and don't shame survivors from coming forward because of your links or associations with any of those particular groupings. No. Cut it out. Exactly. Okay, so while the good people of St. James Island in the US, oh, sorry, I'll start again. Okay, so another huge thing that's happened this week, it's from the US Virgin Islands where Jeffrey Epstein had his island, obviously, and um, there was a court hearing the other day and the Attorney General for the US Virgin Islands um, was talking about the frustration they're having with dealing with Epstein's estate and they also can't get truthful information and they need that to be able to pass the money on. Ah, to the victims. Mm. So this is an exclusive interview in um, Vanity Fair. Oh, is this the Denise woman? Yes. Oh, I've heard so many differing ideas about her why she's going after the money and why she, if she understands there were victims, why wasn't she stopping the victims? They would have seen them land on the target. Exactly. Everyone knew. It's like this case, everyone knew. Um, okay, so one of the employees told the um, Attorney General he saw Prince Andrew on a balcony groping girls right out in front of the open. And apparently she says... He remembered walking up to him and saying, good morning, Your Highness. Ugh. Of course, Buckingham Palace declined to comment and Prince Andrew has denied any knowledge of Epstein's behaviour. But there are a lot of accusations and he's been around a lot of dodgy people. But unless the estate agrees to release former employees from NDAs, this is what I'm having a hard time understanding why the NDAs are so crucial, why they can't be, I suppose, gazumped by the more important pieces, and that's the children who are abused. Why is an NDA so powerful when he's dead? I've been looking into it, and it seems in different places, different jurisdictions, and it's different mm. that you can overturn some one that was done elsewhere in a different state. And if a judge can rule that the NDA was signed under duress or they didn't have proper legal representation, and think about it, mm. a lot of these victims are so young from the wrong side of the tracks because that's the way they liked it because they couldn't complain or wouldn't be taken seriously, they probably didn't have legal representation and saw what happened to other girls who stepped forward, especially those girls in Florida who were trailed by PIs and the family were harassed. And threats. Threats were made. So, of course, they signed um, NDAs and probably were given money. That doesn't make them guilty and just chasing money by throwing these accusations around. Now, according to Denise George, the Attorney General, attorneys for the estate have presented an incomplete accounting of Epstein's assets. So that's the thing. She wants more money. 
So apparently his assets, so he's not a billionaire, but they're between five seventy eight million and six thirty five million. God, could you imagine winning a million dollars? Yeah. This is just so unbelievable. These amounts, these figures we're talking about, it's just beyond our scope. And then there was that um, nearly $13 million that disappeared from his bank. That got transferred to the bank after his death. Mm. So I don't think this is going to be a fast process at all because the US Virgin Islands is known for taking its time. Well, they haven't got back to you on our bank account. Exactly. And I think that he changed his will, didn't he, two days before. I think this was deliberate. Mm. And I would just like to know um, how accountable these lawyers are in the US who are the will not the beneficiaries, but they're the administrators of the will. I want to know how accountable they are. And how much they're profiting from it. Yeah, because you can take money out of an estate when you're in charge of it, can't you? Yep. So it'll be interesting to see. But they've appointed now one of the lawyers who's involved in getting the money back from the, for the Bernie Madoff victims. So at least he's experienced. Good. That is a positive step forward. But Prince Andrew, today on your day of days, I would like to say that you need to come forward to the FBI. You need to talk to the cops now. But I'm thinking that he is too far into his lie now. He can't backtrack. I think he is such a stubborn and I believe him to be really uneducated. Sure, he went to fancy school. But I don't think he's smart. He doesn't have any insight. I think he believes that he hasn't done anything wrong. True. And if it was two or three hundred years ago, he'd probably be demanding people be executed. So on your birthday, I just want to remind you that you have been associated with several convicted and accused pedophiles. Epstein, Keith Gleed, who was the um, person from the school uh, the, in Canada. Yep. We've got Jimmy Savile. And Peter Nygaard. So this is not going to go away fast. You have to do what's right. Come forward. Well, he already said he would. So hurry up. Anyway, I have another announcement to make. Jen has prepared a special present for the prince. Well, it's your birthday. So I thought I needed to send all our lovely listeners off to YouTube to check out you and your finest, you protesting a judge's ruling in the 1987 Royal Embarrassment, also known as It's a Knockout Royal Tournament. So Lisa said, go watch this and give me a critique. I'm nasty, aren't I? Oh, God, the thing she makes me do. But I had already seen it. True. Mm. So I turn it on and it's like, Blackadder, I'm going, oh, okay, so we've got a castle, we've got people dressed up in bad costumes, very pantomime, and out walks Alad Jones. Now, Alad Jones was a big name in the UK in the 80s. He was a child singer. He was Welsh. He had the most insane voice, and I know all about him because my grandma used to send me his records for my birthday because being half Welsh, it was the thing. So there was Alad Jones marching out as a herald announcing something and then do-do, do-do. and next comes i think it was lord block who was black adder there it was i lost it that was the first time i pissed myself laughing and it wasn't going to be the last that was the best bit though oh it was the best the bit highlight the highlight of the whole <laughs> show but he was accompanied by beautiful barbara now any of you familiar with the Carry On movie. So I think it was about 27. It was Sid Jane's Barbara Windsor. She was the cute little blondie with the big... Bazunkas. Bazunkas, norks, whatever else they called them. Um, she was the lady knock. And it was like, my God. So what followed was a who's who of UK pantomime or who's been on the bill. Plus sports stars of that era, Olympians, there was an American footballer as well. Wasn't too familiar with him. But then the other stars, John Travolta, he was there. Christopher Tom, Reeve. Tom Jones, but he's half Welsh, isn't he? Yeah, he's all Welsh. All yes. Welsh. There was Sheena Easton. 
Ma baby. Yeah. Oh, we're not going to sing. I was going to sing it, but everyone will turn off. And, of course, those who are colonialists like us, you don't understand who Viv Richards is. Ah, um, famous cricketer. Probably and one of the world's best ever. I've met him. Of course you have. I have. I used to be a sports reporter. I've met Viv. Lovely bloke. Bought me a beer. Didn't try and harass me at all. Nice guy. Nice guy. And speaking of, yeah, Cliff, Cliff Richard, eh? John Cleese was involved mm. in this. So what happened was you had Edward was trying to, Prince Edward, the youngest, was trying to break into TV production. And it's a knockout of being on, you know, UK TV. And he thought, well, let's do a royal version and raise money for different charities. So he convinced Andrew to lead one team. Edward was leading another. Fergie, of course, had to be in on it. And this was a year after she'd married Andrew, Andrew. anyway. So yeah. she, we're talking thin Fergie. And, of course, they needed a fourth because there's always four teams. Apparently Di really wanted to do it, but Charles went, no, no, no. So Princess Anne stepped forward to support her youngest brother. Obviously he was trying to use this as to get into TV production work. And now, she looked kind of half mortified the whole time. She did, but as she said, she was her team's motto was cool, calm and collected, and she was fantastic. She didn't jump around like Fergie did. She didn't carry on. And it was so funny seeing the Royals, the split with Anne being so calm and collected and her team, they won. They absolutely blitzed the opposition. Oh, so you went to part two, did you? I went to part two and then I went and watched as much as I could for the aftermath, which is hysterical too. Um, So Anne was very dignified. Sarah, of course, had Meatloaf, the singer, on her team. I think that says enough. Um... Edward is a bit awkward, but he, he managed to have quite a few Olympians on his team because it's very physical, this So thing. he stacked it. He stacked it. Um, but the funniest thing was there was a headless ghost who had to chase maidens down a field. So And the maidens weren't running. They had to hop and grab flowers. And so the first headless ghost that just absolutely lost it, <laughs> fell over, couldn't catch the maiden, they took the massive puppet or thing that he was wearing off. It was Cliff Richard. Oh, how funny that Sir Cliff Richard couldn't catch a maid and couldn't. Oh, that's I had hilarious. To, had to laugh at that one. But Andrew demanded at one stage a rerun of one of the competitions because of course he did. Because he was on the green team and the two green players knocked each other out of contention. No, and he's like, no, no, I demand a rerun. And the next thing you know, Fergie runs over and goes, oh, I also demand a rerun. And the judges are going, no. So Andrew turns to the crowd, starts, you know, his arms are going around and he's going, come on, the crowd supports me. You want a rerun? Did they, did they support him? It was a bit half asked, mm. very half asked, and the judges stood firm. And the look on Andrew's face, it was, it was a sock. It was definitely a sock. But in the end, the judges ruled. No rerun, and, of course, Princess Anne won. But the very end bit, Mm. after it all finished, was young Edward, who looks scarily like Andrew. But he also looks like, I think, a little bit like Prince William as well. Yeah, they're rather inbred, that lot. It faced the journos, who were all there, but he was insistent that the journos couldn't be out mingling with the crowd or with the participants themselves because, you know, they're just journos. They stuck them in a tent so they could see it, I think, on a TV screen but couldn't see it closely. It was hot. There wasn't enough food. There were quite a few journos there, TV cameras, so there was hot lights. There was everything. No water or drinks. Nothing. And you've got to feed the media. Anyone who has an event, that's important. If you don't feed us, we revolt. And they certainly did because he was asking them, oh, did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah. And he he lost it. He stormed out. out. He stormed out. And that became the story of this event, not the million pounds that was raised for the various charities. It was Edward's little spit. And after that, though, he went quiet. And so he didn't make it in TV production, but I understand he's a full-time working royal. He's taken over Prince Philip's role. And probably a bit of Andrew's as well. Well, he'd have to, you know, there's quite a few things going at the moment. So I think that was his shining light. The Queen was horrified afterwards and before from the sounds of it. Mm. 
it wasn't a good look. But Andrew trying to fight with the four judges about rerun, rerun, and Fergie just racing straight up to back up her man. It was bad. It's everything we know about those two, isn't it? But that particular event, that show, has been featured on so many, you know, combined clip shows like Embarrassing 80s. It always makes the grade yeah. in the UK. Oh, for sure. It's 24 karat gold, Jen. It's bad. Well, because I don't have my bank, I just need to talk to everyone about my cat's application to join the exclusive Tramp Nightclub, which was where Prince Andrew allegedly was with Virginia Roberts. He says he was at Pizza Express. Everyone else says he was there. So I thought, okay, I'm in for a bit of like, oh, civil disruption, okay, at the moment. So um, I had to tell my cat to be on her very best behaviour. So they asked in the application, what other societies or clubs are you a member of? Um, I was in Jeffrey Epstein's Black Book. I like Pizza Express. She is so smart. What are your hobbies or interests? Jumping up to get others' food. What do you think of that one, Jen? I think that's good. Your cat, your pussy is good. Well, also, um, she wants to broaden her circle of tomcats because you know what happened. Her story is very tragic. Um, the father of her kittens ran away. Oh. And she was, like, roaming the streets and her kittens died. Oh. So that's how she ended up with us. So I want her to have a good life. And maybe this will help. She said that she'll be able, she'll want to use the cocktail bar, the restaurant and the nightclub, but not the smoking terrace. Okay. And the name of this um, sponsor is Prince Andrew and the seconder is... Tuesday. <laughs> Maxwell. Um, now, additional information you may feel enhances your application. Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Yay. So if they don't let her in after all of that... That's um, pretty comprehensive. Yeah, occupation, duh, cat. Um, sleeping, eating, lying in the sun. So anyway, that is my latest, I suppose, civil disobedience for this week after I got nowhere. With the bank. Yeah. I think this is great. I'm trying to work out where else we can go and have a bit of fun poking people and this type of thing. I think we should apply for any club. I'll tell them about the Royal website. Oh, brilliant. Just hit Twitter really late last yeah. night. We're insomniacs and we're always awake. Yeah. Someone got hold, broke into the Royal Family's charitable website where they linked to every all the members' mm. charities. But apparently someone hacked Harry's and instead of going to one of his charities, it goes to a Chinese porn site. So I want to buy a beer for whoever went in there and hacked that because that is hysterical. I don't approve of the hacking of Harry. No, well, I just approve of the hacking of general, general, especially when it links to a porn site and it involves the royal family. And possibly it was appointed, you know, you're using Harry again as a smokescreen for the person mm. who is involved in, allegedly involved in porn and, you know, pedophilia. So I thought that was great. I do like a little bit of civil disobedience. Yeah, I, I do. Um, so we've had a bit of a royal theme this week. We promise we won't go on about him. I prefer not to have to talk about him, to be honest. But it is his birthday today. Yes, he's 60. That's a milestone. And this is your birthday present. But we'll get back to the real stuff. Not that this isn't real, but we'll concentrate more on the serious side of it next week. Yes, we certainly will. We are on Twitter always. Always. I'm Lisa L. Tate. Who are you? Oh, really, truly. You see us replying to each other's threads. We're also um, the Prince and the Perv on Instagram. You'll find us on Facebook. Um, it's the Epstein Wikipod yep. Prince and the Perv. I'm sorry about that. Um, I will tighten it down eventually. And we're on YouTube. Mm. So if you've got any links, you've got any tip-offs, you've got any idea of uh, what new civil disobedience we can get involved in, just hit us up, whichever social media platform you're on. Yeah, exactly. We love hearing from you guys. It's so good. Um, because we thought we'd only be speaking to 10 people in the beginning, didn't we? Well, that's our family. Yeah. Yeah. Combined. And they've had enough of us anyway. Yeah, my husband doesn't listen, thank God. 
And I've, we've also got a blog as well. So that's exciting. We love hearing from everyone. Thank you for being so supportive. Um, continue the fight against these one percenters, don't you think? We need to. Mm. It's humanity. Yeah, I think we just need to tell our friends and family about it all because all they know is Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Well, that's not the issue. The issue isn't that he didn't kill himself. The issue is who had him hit, why he had, why he was done in. Shalane! And, you know, who does his death protect? It certainly doesn't protect the survivors and that's who this is all about, the survivors. Now, I will not be making trumpet sounds next week either. No, birthdays only. <laughs> so if it's anyone's birthday, I can do a shout-out, but I think it's better not to Oh, it depends, if they're nice. Noise pollution? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't do that to you all. Okay, have a great week and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, bye. bye.